Where are my American Werewolf in Paris fans at? A anybody? Bueller? What is up guys? Welcome to my review of An American Werewolf in Paris, the much loved sequel to the classic American Werewolf in London. So if you did not see my review of American Werewolf in London that came out a few days ago, please check that out. And in that video, I talked about our upcoming 31 on 31 video on May 31st. And if you don't know what that is, me and a group of friends that we call ourselves Autop Stream, we typically once, twice, three times a year, depending on our mood, do a ranking video where we do a theme, a collection of franchises, and 31 films are ranked worst to best on the 31st of a month. And the brand new theme that we are going to be doing this May is Creatures of the Night, Vampire and Werewolf Films. And this one was a lot different because typically we just pick a theme, pick franchises, and gather 31 films that fit that criteria. And this time we decided to let all the viewers in on the fun and we let 10 of the 31 films be voted on by all of you. And both of the American Werewolf films are gonna be a part of that ranking. So be sure to check out my previous review and then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the fun on May 31st. So an American Werewolf in Paris came out in 1997. It was a long awaited sequel to the very much celebrated an American Werewolf in London, what many call the best werewolf film of all time. And it quickly just got demolished by critics, got demolished by fans, and ever since 1997 has been widely known and considered amongst us horror fans as one of the worst movies ever made. I saw this in the theaters with my dad in 1997. I had it on VHS tape. I eventually bought it on DVD when I found it randomly at a media play, for those that remember that fucking store. And you know what? For many, many reasons, I agree with everybody. There are so many things about this film that is just... Not very good, especially when you're comparing it to an American werewolf in London. But for some reason, maybe that old powerful bitch nostalgia. I've always liked this movie. What the fuck did I do wrong? Starting off with the positives for an American werewolf in Paris. I just like the concept that they go for here to be very unique to where there is actually a clan of werewolves that have access to this serum that can make them turn into a lichen on command. No full moon, no lunar cycle, none of that stuff. Uh, there was a storyline regarding Julie Delby's father who was trying to develop a serum to cure her of her lycanthropy and apparently he fucked up that serum. Absolutely, because as soon as he injected it into her she became a werewolf. And so that whole concept about a group of foreigners that lure Americans into these little nightclubs and wall it off and then inject themselves with serum so that they can slaughter everybody, I thought is a really gnarly concept. And I think it's a really cool concept to this day. It's kind of like the opening of Blade before Blade was a thing. It's almost like a more fantastical and not anywhere near as gratuitous version of hostile in a certain way to where it really preys on that fear of us Americans about uh, traveling abroad. Or maybe that's just me. Am I the only one that has that fear? I've watched too many horror films. I'm like, fuck no, I ain't going to Germany. Hell no, I ain't going to Paris. Have you seen Hostel? Drawing in Americans because they are fish out of water. They're just looking to party and have fun. And when they get slaughtered beyond belief, there's not going to be the best investigation in the world because they are out of their home country. There's just some really interesting ideas in there. You know, you can argue all day long about the execution, and I will agree with most of you that say it's not executed particularly well, but the actual idea of a clan of werewolves that are using this serum to just mass murder Americans just every single weekend, I think it's pretty cool. If you watched my review of American Werewolf in London, you heard me say that I don't think the comedy side of that horror comedy is all that good uh, is not that funny to me you know that's just a matter of taste we all have our different styles of humor i will say i do think that the humor is slightly better done in american werewolf in paris it's a little bit more frat boy humor it's a little bit more of that 90s era humor which i grew up in so that just makes sense for me if you're somebody that grew up in the 80s you probably uh, disagree wholeheartedly with that and that's fine but you know the whole 
condom bubblegum bit. Uh, you have the two friends that are digging through the garbage trying to find the note, and the, the lady drops some coins, and they start fighting with each other over 15 cents. Even some of the visual gags later on regarding uh, like some of the, the corpses that are following around the main character. And you've got Julie Bowen trying to like lure Tom Everett Scott into death the entire time because she wants the curse to be broken and her, to, her soul to go free. And she's trying to whistle to the werewolves, and her eye pops out and stuff. Again, low-hanging fruit. This is not a movie that I would consider one of the funnier movies of the era, but I get more laughs out of this than I do London. And make no mistake, some of those laughs are unintentional and me actually laughing at the movie. You forgot this. As far as actors in this movie, I do think that Julie Delpy does her best here. She's always been very cute, very charming, and I think that her character here continues that. You know, she's a little mysterious, a little bit off-putting at first because you don't know exactly what her motivations are. And the more that she starts to get a bit of a likening to the main character and starting to soften to him and have a little bit more feelings for him, you get to see these different shades of her, these very sweet romantic shades and these nurturing shades. And also you get to see her be a little bit tougher, a little bit meaner and a little bit more of a of a bad bitch if you will and so I, I think that if anybody in this film deserves a bit of a pat on the back it's her I like her character I like what she does with it I also really like the soundtrack in this movie again it's just my era when you got things like Bush in here that does is an instant time capsule for me and so every time I rewatch this film I always get into the music selection and finally I think the third act is actually pretty damn entertaining when you get this whole nightclub thing and all these werewolves are just slaughtering all of these people and you get the police in there and even the snobby little investigators that don't believe Tom Everett Scott the entire movie they get theirs in a scene all the way going down to these catacombs you get the whole almost death of seraphine and a little bit of a romantic moment there to where she was shot by her love interest and he leaves her there and all the way down into the subway which is a pretty cool little set piece and I like the fact that the movie ends with the antagonist and the protagonist fighting over this syringe and then he stabs himself with it and then rips the heart out of the antagonist. I just, I think the third act is fun. When you're made to not like the antagonist whatsoever throughout this movie, he's a dick, he's got some really weird obsession with Americans. I love Americans. And then you see him get his, you know, nails just carving into his shoulder as Tom Everett Scott is transforming and getting his heart ripped out and consumed. All that stuff is satisfying to me. Moving on to the mixed, and I might shock some people when I say this. I think that the CGI werewolves are decent. You're crazy. You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Now, I get it when you tie this to American Werewolf in London, a movie that to this day, 40-something years later, is still hailed as the greatest werewolf transformation of all time and one of the best showcases of practical effects. And you watch it today, and that stuff still has aged beautifully. It is still just as effective and awesome as it was back in the 80s. I get it. When you tie it to that and then you follow it up with a CGI movie, it's kind of an insult to injury. I felt the same way about the Thing prequel, so I hear you. Maybe it's because I grew up watching this movie. Maybe it's because I have an affinity to defend it a little more than most people. But when I watched the movie yesterday and rewatched it, I actually don't think that the CGI werewolves look as bad as people make them out to be. I still would prefer them to be practical, 100%. I always champion practical over CGI. And this being kind of still in that transitional phase of the late 90s into the early 2000s where we really started to see a lot more early CGI, I think this is one of the better examples of that. And there's not very many good ones out there. I mean, there are far worse examples of late 90s and early 2000s CGI that looks like absolute dog shit. And I don't think this looks like dog shit. I think that it looks fine. It's not as convincing as practical, nor will it ever be. It's going to age worse the older this movie gets, but I don't think it looks all that bad. I think it looks fine. Now moving on to the negatives. Tom Everett Scott, not a very compelling lead, not a very interesting character. Uh, I don't think he's all that funny. I don't think he's all that charming. I don't really buy into his romance with Seraphine all that much. I totally buy into Julie Delpy's character, but I don't really buy into him. He just seems like kind of a doofy bro wannabe. And I just, 
as a character, as the lead into our story, I never really care about his fate. Sticking to characters, I've always found it to be strange that once you get one of Tom Everett Scott's best friends that just gets slaughtered and turns into this walking spirit. The other friend is just kind of forgotten in the movie, Chris. Like, he's in heavily in the first act of the film, and then he just kind of gets kidnapped and becomes this person that you see in a few scenes later on. He never actually talks with Tom Everett Scott too much. They don't team up with anything. He doesn't let them know, hey, by the way, our friend that got his throat torn out, yeah, I still talk to that motherfucker. So the movie, the script kind of feels like it just abandons that guy's character until he comes back in the wedding scene. And while there's not necessarily obvious places to stick him throughout the story for the cut that we have seen for years now, but I just, I always felt like the movie forgets about that character. I also feel like the movie really drops the ball in giving us some interesting motivation for the villain. You have Claude here, who from the moment he shows up is just like, Americans? I love Americans. And that's basically five out of seven lines that they give this guy throughout the movie. I love Americans. So you find out through dialogue, he stole Julie Delpy's blood to become a lycanthrope. Presumably he turned his friends as well. Found out about this serum, stole all of that, of which I don't know, if is there a finite supply of this shit? Like how many of these vials did her stepdad actually make before he realized he completely fucked them up? I don't know. But you don't really get much of an idea of why he wants to be a werewolf so bad. Why he has such a hard on for Americans. Why he feels it necessary to slaughter people more than once a month. There's all these questions that they could have explored in an interesting way to really like carve out an interesting villain or give some kind of a weird or a fucked up motivation to really make us despise this guy but essentially they just make him a figurehead for generic werewolves. I also feel like the relationship between Tom Everett Scott's character and his best friend and eventually Julie Bowen as the limbo corpses that he has killed, they don't really do anything memorable with exploring that. I mean, the first film was very dark and very deliberate with the whole survivor's guilt and literally trying to convince his friend to kill himself, not only to prevent further deaths, but also to kind of break the cycle and let this guy's soul free. And the movie takes a much softer approach to that, which just kind of makes it bland. It kind of makes it feel like an afterthought. Even to the point where Julie Bowen's character to where uh, she doesn't get any kind of an ending. She doesn't get any kind of a resolution and because Tom Everett Scott continues on and him and Julie Delpy are going to go on forever and ever, she's just going to walk the earth in limbo, continuing to deteriorate. And they, they don't do anything to address that. And finally, the very end of this movie is rushed and doesn't make a whole lot of sense, aside from just a visual callback to the opening of the film at the Eiffel Tower. So as soon as you get Tom Everett Scott eating the heart out of Claude and setting himself free from the lichen curse, it immediately hard cuts to Tom Everett Scott and Julie Delpy on top of the Statue of Liberty getting ready to get married and do another bungee jump stunt. And you sit there and you think about it for more than two seconds and you go, okay, but she's still a werewolf. <laughs> it, there's some questions that I have about how this relationship's gonna work. All in all, guys, this is not a movie that I would die on a hill for, but it's a movie that, mostly because of nostalgia and because I watched it so much as a kid, it was my favorite werewolf movie as a kid. Take that as you will. I've always, had a softer heart for this movie than most people. I don't think it's anywhere near as good as London. I don't think it's anywhere near the top of best werewolf films. And I would not recommend this to very many people, but I've always found it to have more redeeming qualities than a lot of people give it credit for. Well, that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed that, please click over here for a playlist of all of my 2023 new release reviews so far. And I'm also going to link you to my American Werewolf in London review. Please like and share and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the fun. On May's 31 on 31 Creatures of the Night video coming soon. With that being said, please remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean you have to be.